Good evening, and welcome to the Wednesday Night Masterclass Series, sponsored through the Center for Fine Arts at St. Francis University. As we get started, I would first like to thank St. Francis University, the Center for Fine Arts, Director of Bands, Dr. Daniel Atwood, and Assistant Director of Bands, Mr. Randall Craddafield, for the opportunity to present this Masterclass. So let's get started. You are probably wondering who the heck is this guy giving this Masterclass? And does he know anything about music or better yet, an instrument? Well, my name is Dr. Scott DiTulio. I'd like to tell you a little bit about me as we get started. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Education, focusing on music education and a concentration in music performance on trumpet from Clarion University of Pennsylvania. I also hold a Master's of Education in Curriculum and Instruction from Lock Haven University of Pennsylvania. I have completed the Pre-K through 12 Administrative Program for Principals through California University of Pennsylvania and completed an educational doctorate from Northeastern University with a focus on curriculum leadership. I am currently in my 24th year of teaching. I am the director of bands and athletic director, yes, you heard that correctly, and the athletic director at Allegheny Clarion Valley High School in Foxburg, Pennsylvania. At Allegheny Clarion Valley, my duties consist of general music, junior high band, senior high band, jazz band, and marching band. I like to not only teach, but to perform as well. I play as much as my schedule will allow, and in as many groups as possible, and with all styles of music. I am also active in sports. Baseball is always a way of life. I have coached at all levels from Pennsylvania American Legion Baseball, to T-ball, minor league, little league, all-star teams, and tournament teams. In 2017, I started coaching and chaperoning the Potter Summer Baseball Tour. The Potter Baseball Tour is a month-long tour through Maryland, Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania doing community service and playing baseball with youth aged 13 to 17. And the rest of my free time, I serve as an adjunct professor at St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, directing the St. Vincent College Jazz Band and teaching the trumpet studio. Wow. Okay, so when does the music come into this? Here we go. When asked to do this master class, I came up with a list of what I thought would help not just brass players, but musicians to get better. So that's what I want to talk about today. The focus is going to be on brass and of course the trumpet, but all of those concepts can be applied to any instrument. Playing an instrument is easy. Well, we say that it is. I have found the following to be true. To play an instrument, it really takes about 5% of your abilities, and the other 95% is a mental game that we all play in the process. I've been blessed to have lessons with some amazing teachers, but one thing they have always taught me, you have to have fun. Now that seems way too easy, but I think you can apply it in all that you do. To have fun, you have to have some skills to do things, but you also have to have the desire to want to be better at what you are doing. I don't know of anyone that approaches anything saying they want to be the worst possible today. So make sure you work hard daily and have fun in all that you do. Now, to have fun really means that some work has to take place at times, but it doesn't seem like work once you have some solid fundamentals to get you going. If you think back to learning how to ride a bike, we all started on some type of pedal bike that our parents pushed us on. Then we went to a tricycle and finally to a really big 17 inch bike with training wheels. We thought we were awesome with those training wheels on and then we finally wanted them off, but we kept one on just as a safety net for us. So we could lean uh, to that one side just in case of an emergency and we didn't think we were gonna stop. We finally realized if we just go for it, we can ride the bike. We had that training wheel taken off and we never looked back. But then we got a bigger bike, and what happened next? We struggled for balance for a few times, and we finally did it without any issues. Well, playing an instrument takes that determination too. If you don't do the work, 
you won't get better. I think this applies not only to music, but to all you do in life. So if you want to have fun, don't be afraid to put in a little work and you will actually have more fun than you could ever imagine. There is no magic potion to get better at an instrument. There are some people that have been blessed with some unbelievable skills and natural talent, but I haven't met very many of them. I've met a lot of musicians who are hobbyists, pro players, and teachers that have had to work like crazy to get better every day. I hope that what they have taught me is what I can share with you today. Practice. What is this? First and foremost, you have to practice. Practice is a way to set goals and work on skills to help you become a better musician. The purpose is simple, to follow and document the progress you are making. Have a goal when you practice. Practice on something that you want to accomplish for each time. Maybe it's just a short practice session, maybe it's for the week, maybe it's for the month, maybe it's longer. Sometimes things happen faster than others, but don't give up when things are challenging. I have found that many goals on trumpet need some extra help every day. Sometimes it feels like I've been playing forever, and on some days, it feels like I've never played the trumpet. Well, after 35 plus years of playing trumpet, when I have one of those bad days, I simply put the trumpet back in the case and walk away. Sometimes you just need to clear your head. If this doesn't happen for me, I usually stay away from my trumpet. Why? Because I find that I take my frustration out on the trumpet and nobody likes to have repair bills. So in the long run, it's more beneficial for me to put the trumpet away and then come back a little while later. So what does my practice routine look like? What I'm gonna go over next is my normal everyday practice, and I call it a guide to proper warm up and a practice routine. The first thing I want you to always think about is the sound that you are producing. That is the goal, to have the most beautiful sound possible. And to do that, what should you do? Well, number one, you need to listen to your instrument specific of some of the great recording artists. It makes it really easy. I will supply Mr. Crowderfield with a list of popular artists uh, that I think you could benefit from just listening to the sound and what they do. So for me, I do a lot of buzzing throughout the day. I use a couple of different concepts for this, but I usually start with just my mouthpiece. I do these crazy little warm-up things and I just play some games. As I'm driving in my car, I like to buzz the melodies. I try to buzz as much as possible. The next thing that I do is I play just on the lead pipe. And what I've done is I've taken the lead pipe off of the trumpet. And you could use the trumpet too, but it's hard to do this in the car when you're traveling. So if I'm able to have a lead pipe with me, I can do some lead pipe buzzing too. a lot of notes that you can play with just this, but you could YouTube and see some really great demonstrations of lead pipe buzzing. Some guys do this for hours on end. For me, I don't know if I could do that for an hour. I think I would get a little bored. The other thing that I've done and I've found is a, is a new mechanism called the buzzer. And what this does, uh, it's a practice aid from Warburton, and it's equivalent to putting the mouthpiece into the trumpet. It feels like I have the whole trumpet. Now I can do that exact same thing with just a mouthpiece. But using the buzzer helps me feel as though I'm playing the trumpet. One of the things that I always try to do as well is I always try to have my fingers going and fingering the notes that I'm playing. So that's how I start my days. Now the warm up that I do. Uh, I try to do something specific for each student that I have. But for me, my warm-up was designed by my former teachers, 
it works for me. They were able to come up with a format that said, if you do this every day, it'll feel like you're ready to play. So for me, what I do is I start with whole notes. I go to eighth notes, triplets, 16th notes, uh, and work my way down. Nothing too difficult, just about, just enough to get the air moving through the trumpet and the lips and the trumpet all responding at the same time. Now, I really hope that I don't blow the speakers out whenever I do this. So we're gonna point the other way. So I always start like this. It's soft, it doesn't have to be very loud. I then go to eighth notes. And I keep going and do some more finger exercises just to get everything moving and to get the airflow moving and the muscles going. I then try to do some lip bends. And then I work down in the lower register. Then for me, I go through some lip slurs and some other fundamental things that I like to do that work for me. But that's something that you're gonna have to find that works for you. It doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, you have to find that warm up that works for you. Some people like to warm up for an hour. Some people like to warm up for two hours. Some people can just put their instrument together and play and be amazing. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people that can just put it together and make it work. So it takes me a little bit of time. Uh, and usually I like to play in the morning. I play first thing when I get to school, now that we've been under quarantine here for uh, 50 some days or 40 some days, uh, I find myself playing more and more throughout the day. So I hope that helps you in keeping that in mind. And, and most importantly, ask somebody for help. That is the biggest thing as you're trying to figure out a practice routine. So how much should you really practice? Well, that's really your call and depends upon what you want to be doing. I will also provide Mr. Craddafield with a chart at the end that says, well, if I practice for 10 or 15 minutes every day or a half hour a week, this is what I will be like or what my skills will progress as. It's pretty good. I hope that you're able to take a look at that at the end of this video. I'm sure he'll be able to put it up for us. So here are my following suggestions uh, of how to practice. So first of all, we have to have a proper warm-up. What is the goal of a proper warm-up? Well, it's to get the air moving. It's a very important part of trumpet playing or any instrument is what comes out. We want that sound to go forever and be the most beautiful thing that happens. It shouldn't be all pinched off and all airy like it sounded like when you were in fourth grade or fifth grade when you first started. It should be a nice, warm, beautiful sound. One of the ways to do this is to make sure you use proper airflow. And that's really simple. If you take a breath, well, that's not too good, you'd say. <coughs> but if you think of a yawn, if you really fill up your lungs, you can get a lot of air to come out. And if you breathe like that, you get a nice warm breath in, the sound comes out, it sounds really nice. Again, always working for that sound. We need to gradually loosen up our facial muscles. I don't think for me, if my muscles were very stiff, if I went out and ran a marathon, which I know I couldn't do, I would be very stiff for many days. Uh, in the world of musicians, we have to make sure that not only our fingers and our bodies limber, but everything around our embouchure has to be as well. So play nice and soft, not to strain anything, and you never want to distort the sound. We were always taught rest equal to what you play so as not to strain the lips. Well, number one, I don't think I ever really knew what that meant. So what I have tried to do in my practice, if I play five measures, I then take a break, I maybe sing through those five measures and finger along, and then I might do it again. Now I don't do that all the time, it all depends how I feel, but make sure that if you play for three hours, don't play for three hours straight, make sure you're taking break, breaks in there and make sure you're breaking up. You always want the blood to come back to this area, the embouchure, especially on brass instruments. Okay, woodwind players, they, they get to play a little bit more than we do. They can play forever, 
Well, they're not using the same amount of pressure here as what we are as brass players. So maybe they do have a little bit of an advantage, especially when it comes to octaves. So you need to think that trumpet playing or brass playing or any instrument playing is like an athletic activity. You must warm up. You need to warm up your embouchure, and I would compare that to that of a pitcher uh, or a jogger or a runner. So my suggested daily practice schedule goes something like this. First and foremost, you have to be disciplined enough to want to get better. If you want to get better, you can get better. And that's going to depend upon how much time you put in or maybe how much time you need to get things better. Maybe on some days you just need to work on fingering patterns. Maybe it's on other days you need to work on some phrasings. So we've already talked a little bit about a warm-up. And for me, uh, personally, my warm-up probably goes a little bit longer than most people. Mine usually takes me about 45 minutes, uh, but I try to do that first thing in the day so that I'm ready to go, and then I can usually pick up my instrument any time and just play. Uh, I said earlier I also like to do lip slurs, uh, and that's just to help build uh, more muscle memory so that when I'm playing trumpet, uh, that a lot of things really come from those lip slurs. Again, I hope I don't kill the microphone system, but a, a basic lip slur. <laughs> And we can do that in several combinations, and that is something that you can find a book to do 12,000 combinations of lip slurs. I don't know if it's really that high, but that's what it seems like. Again, for as much as you play, try to rest. And all we're trying to do is try to get that blood to come back. If you're an athlete, uh, maybe you're a gymnast or a swimmer, I'm going to guess that if you swim every day and you would swim for three hours straight, you would be pretty tired and not able to function. So you've got to take some breaks in there as well. Now, when you're running, you do a warm-up period. You go out, you run for, uh, I don't know, five, six miles. That's way more than what I would ever want to do. Uh, and then you have a warm-down period as well. So it's, it's a matter of getting your body functioning so that it can help you to become better. Next, for me in my practice routine, <coughs> is technique and scale studies. And I like to say that this is the language of music. We develop coordination and finger strength. In the world of brass players, we equate this to, we call it the Bible of trumpet playing or the Bible of brass playing, which is the Arvin's book. And there's several others out there too, like the Clark studies and the Smith studies. And it's, again, it's finger strength, getting muscle memory so that you know what fingers to put down, how it all works together. Your body has to work as a fine oiled machine, just like an athlete. So you have to be on top of your game each and every day and each time you pick up the instrument. Then I like to practice tonguing exercises. Again, single tonguing, double tonguing, and triple tonguing. And again, the Arvin's book is the number one book that we can use for that. And then we can create exercises as well to help us try to work on that. I also like to do some sight reading. And when I sight read, I like to just pick anything possible off of my shelf to play. Maybe today I could play ballads. Maybe tomorrow I can play pop tunes. Maybe I'll play classical music. Uh, whichever, is, whichever I just feel like I'm in the mood for. Uh, I took one lesson that a teacher said I play this group on Mondays, this group on Tuesdays. And he had seven different piles of music that he would play just as a sight reading material. I've started to do that a little bit, but I found that I just don't have enough room in my studio. After I do sight reading... Uh, I go in, I continue to work on things that I'm having trouble with. Uh, maybe there's a passage in the band music that I'm just struggling with to play. I sit down, I try to make that sl as slow as possible, uh, and then I speed it back up. I heard somebody uh, in one of the other ones talk about using a tuner of some type, uh, and we all know with technology, you know, I can pull up my phone, uh, tuner on that, tuner on this, uh, a metronome to keep the time. All of these things are great tools, and you have to find which one works best for you and in what scenarios. Uh, so I continue to work on things like that, and then at the end of my time, I, I play some long tones. Uh, and what long tones do is you just hold a note and you hold it as long as you can play it, keeping a good sound and keeping it in tune, and then you try to go lower and lower. And what this does for a brass player, I have found, is that it, it builds endurance, which means it makes allows me to play longer each and every day. Uh, 
It helps me to develop that good tone quality that we're always talking about. As I said at the very beginning, the most important thing is what's coming out of the bell of the instrument. All right. So, and when we perform, you need to make sure that you listen carefully to what you play and what others around you are playing. So just because you're practicing, uh, when you practice, you're really performing. Uh, sometimes we get to practice in a large ensemble, uh, such as marching band or concert band, orchestra. Uh, and we have to use our ears. We have to do a balance and blend approach so that we know what is happening at all times. Again, always focusing on the sound that is coming out. When you practice, always think pretty sound, listen, and always use airflow. If I was to take my hands and wrap them around your neck and, and squeeze, something would happen to all of you. You would end up turning blue and you would probably fall over. Well, the same thing happens whenever you play a musical instrument. If you don't use enough airflow, your sound is not going to be very good. You might get that really pinched off sound like we talked about when you were a beginner. Or you might have this big, beautiful sound uh, as a professional player does. Well, we'd like you to always have that big sound, but remember, don't be lazy. Sometimes when we get tired, <coughs> it's a sign of losing focus on our air. I have found for me personally that when I get tired, I really have to focus on air. Once I start to refocus on my air, everything seems to come back for me, and I'm going to be able to play much better. As we move into the ensembles, make sure that, you know, sometimes there's strenuous work. Uh, if you're playing in jazz band or marching band, uh, that's pretty strenuous on what we call the chops or the fingers of the body. Uh, so when you're practicing that type of stuff, practice softer. You don't always have to go a thousand miles an hour to be successful. Slow it down, bring down your volume, and relax. But most importantly, good sound and have fun. Well, by you relaxing a little bit and doing it a little bit softer, you might be able to produce a better tone quality so that whenever you get out of that ensemble setting, you're able to be the leader of the group and everybody wants to sound like you do. Maybe your, your ensemble playing is less strenuous, and I think of orchestra at times as less strenuous for a trumpet player because we don't have to have the, the trumpets uh, or the trombones nailed on our face like we do in marching band, but in orchestra we get to count a few more rests, right? But we need to make it a comparable to what we're going to be playing. Again, I think the easiest thing to do is to use some common sense. So what happens as you continue? Well, in ensemble and solo playing, uh, you really have to uh, make sure your playing is one, okay? You need to make sure that your dynamics and articulations are together, your phrasing is together, all the breathing is together. And I like to teach that you, you, you do your phrasing in musical sentences. Whenever we read a sentence in a book, we pause at a comma. Well, we have the same type of thing in music. I call it a comma in the sky, but it's really a breath work. So every time we see those, make sure we get a breath. But you also have to learn how to make sure you don't take too much air because what happens if you have too much air in your body, all that other air is not going to be exhaled, and then you're going to get stuck and start to hyperventilate, and then it feels like you have to exhale for 20 minutes to come back to reality. Always follow the lead players. Those are the people playing the first parts. Make sure you're doing the same articulations as they are. Make sure you're doing the same dynamics. Whoever those first chair players are, or lead players, Make sure they take control of any situation. Maybe if there's a question about any type of style or articulation, that's the first person you should ask in your section. But then when in doubt, those players should also ask the band directors, uh, you know, hey, what type of articulation should we use there? Follow basic articulation charts. Don't try to be too creative and make things more difficult. When you're playing a solo, solos must be heard no matter what dynamic marking it is, at the same time, always remembering to produce a beautiful sound. Again, sound is the most important thing. Legitimate playing requires more emphasis on exact articulations, which are written in the music. So again, you're always asking your director, what should I do here? How do we do that? Jazz playing sometimes requires players to add proper inflections where needed. Uh, maybe you're using mutes, 
Um, maybe uh, you're using your hand as a wawa. So you need to make sure that you play in the correct style as well. Again, not overplaying and always keeping a most beautiful sound as your forte. Marching band. Just because we move outside doesn't mean you have to overblow. You don't have to go too crazy. You need to make sure no matter what you're doing in any ensemble and in any practice session, you have to think musically. Music is an art, whether you're on the field or in the concert hall. So make sure that you don't overblow. Make sure you always have that good, beautiful sound coming up. And again, we can find all kinds of great recording artists for you to listen to. I wish that we would have had YouTube growing up like you guys do today. YouTube is one of the greatest tools ever because we can go back and we can watch those great performers play and play and play. And we can even play along with them and so we can imitate exactly what they do. If you're outside, make sure you take some precautions against the cold weather, no matter what instrument you play. Uh, make sure you protect your lips. Everybody likes to use something different. I have found that Blistex works really well. I have found uh, sometimes just a Vaseline substance works very well. But that's all up to individual players. You have to find something that works. You have to also remember that as you use things on your lips, it's also going to come off onto the trumpet mouthpiece or the brass mouthpiece or the woodwind mouthpiece. So you've got to make sure that you clean those off as well. When you're outside, make sure you, everything is warm. The instrument itself is as warm as humanly possible whenever you play. Now, I know football season gets a little bit late at times, and when we go to play out in that cold weather, it just goes crazy. But still, if you use your ears and try to make the most beautiful sound possible, you should still be okay. As we move into smaller ensembles, such as brass ensembles, <coughs> you have to make sure that your articulations and the actual ensemble playing are the biggest concepts that you think about. Always thinking about the most important thing, balance and blend in that sound that is coming out. Work for a true blend between sections in every section of your brass choir. Within ensembles, work constantly for good intonation. Those are my steps to practice. I would be more than happy to send you or help you accumulate files that you can practice. For me, uh, I like to play a lot of jazz things. I like to play, it says the Arbin's book, as I mentioned earlier, that's called the Bible of Trumpet Playing. We have several other different technique books that I like to use. I'll grab a couple here just to show you. As I explore in the upper register of playing trumpet, I like to use the Zorn book. Uh, it's a lot of lip flexibility. Uh, it's some long tone things. It's get up there, get back down. There is uh, a great teacher out in the Lock Haven area, Dr. Eddie Severn, who I've studied with a couple times. He's provided me with some finger drills uh, and ways to just keep my air moving, keep my fingers moving, all focusing on that great sound. Lip flexibilities uh, for the trumpet, 41 studies by Walter W. Smith, uh, Walter M. Smith, sorry. Uh, is another great book that I use every single day as well. So I hope that I was able to answer some questions for you today. I hope that you were able to follow along. I hope that you're staying safe in these crazy times of what we're in. I hope that musically you are growing every day. I'd like to encourage you to step outside that box sometimes. Step up and take a chance. But remember, always make sure it's the best possible sound that you can produce. Reviewing things that we talked about today, you can always find a teacher, and in today's world of technology, we can make that even easier now. Might not be the easiest of things to do, but it doesn't even matter how old you are, you can still find a teacher. Here I am, I said I've been playing for 35 plus years, and I have a lesson scheduled for next week uh, with Pops McLaughlin down in Texas. I can't wait to use technology for the first time as a lesson to see how that actually works. You have great resources that have already been provided for you from the other segments as well for Wednesday night master classes. And reach out and ask the band directors as well. Maybe your high school band director has a secret that they know. Know that playing an instrument, there is no, there is no magic fairy dust, as I like to say to my kids. Uh, but it takes you working hard as an individual, you working harder than anything that you want to be more successful. Is it easy? Some days are easy, some days are difficult, but the work that you put into it is the joy at the end. 
There's nothing more exciting than working your tail off. And at the very end, whenever the band finally comes together, or you played the fastest 16th notes you've ever had to play in band, or you're playing a solo and it finally works, it is the greatest feeling in the world. I hope that you've enjoyed this little master class this evening. Please don't be afraid to reach out to me. My email is scott.tutulio at gmail.com. And I know that Mr. Pratifill will put that up there as well so you can see it. Again, I will send him the stuff that he can post a couple things at the end of the presentation as well. I thank you for watching this evening. I ask you to keep making music, keep stepping outside the box. Remember, music is something that you can do for a lifetime. Unfortunately, you can't play football your entire life. You can't play baseball your entire life. You can play music your entire life. It's something you can always do. Enjoy it. Have fun. Greatest sound that you can produce, have fun, do it with other people that like to do the same things. Thank you. Stay safe. God bless. Uh -huh.